In our previous episode on the trials and tribulations that befell Turin, son of Hurin, due to the curse Morgoth had imposed upon the House of Hador, we continued his tale until the destruction of the Kingdom of Nagathrond. Yet this was not to be the end of the woe which was to be wrought upon Turin, for the honeyed words of Glaurung were to drive him far away from the one woman who could avert his doom. Glaurung's magic made Turin think his mother and sister were suffering in Dor Lomin. The scene was set for a tragic and bitter end to the tale of the children of Hurin as their father watched on. We don't have Morgoth trying to influence our minds, but there are plenty of algorithms, data brokers and ad sellers that are. Make them miss the mark by protecting your information through our sponsor NordVPN at nordvpn.com slash wizardsandwarriors. With a single click, you can access NordVPN and have your data shielded by the latest encryption, which when combined with the fact that Nord itself doesn't track your internet usage or share it around, means those forces out there trying to sell the keys to your mind to advertisers will have a hard time. And when your data does get taken in breaches, their dark web monitor will tell you if it's out there to be used against you. But it's not just that. Their threat protection system also fights malware and viruses as you browse, and you can use their worldwide network of servers to access parts of the internet unique to certain countries. Very useful for getting more content from subscription services that restrict your library by location. You can get started with NordVPN at our link nordvpn.com slash wizardsandwarriors, where if you use our code wizardswarriors, you'll get a free gift on top of a two-year plan. And they also offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try it all out risk-free. That's nordvpn.com slash wizardsandwarriors and code wizardswarriors. Following a long and arduous trek through the frozen wilderness of Beleriand in the harsh winter, Turin finally came to the land of his birth and found himself a stranger among his people. The Easterlings had asserted their rule over Dor Lomin, with Turin's people now becoming the serfs of the region. Coming to his mother's home, he found it to be a pale reflection of the former dwelling of Hurin as the Easterlings had sacked it. It was occupied by their chief, Broder, who had taken Turin's kinswoman, Erin, as his wife. Having been informed that his mother Morwen had made her way south with his sister Nienor in tow a year and three months ago, Turin was driven to immense anger and drew his black blade within the Great Hall. In the blink of an eye, Turin grasped the chieftain in his arm and placed Gurthang to his throat. Only then was the deception of Glaurung revealed. Norwen and Nienor had made their way to Doriath in search of the bearer of the Dragon Helm. At that moment, as the deception faded in an instant, the cries of Finduilis could be heard in a brutal pitch to the perpetually cursed son of the House of Hador, yet it would be too late to upend the cruel dictates of fate. Turin threw Broder at the other Easterlings, breaking the chieftain's neck. A battle ensued within the hall, and Turin slew three more Easterlings in a heartbeat. The men of Dor Lomin, who were enslaved for so long beneath the cruel yoke of their oppressors, rose up and with their aid, Turin killed many Easterlings. Turin then left Dor Lomin, and although the Easterlings hunted him, he could hide out the brutal winter with a number of the men of his father's former domain, who had decided to live as free men rather than thralls to the Easterlings. As Turin turned to view the land of his forefathers one final time, the plumes of smoke rising from Dor Lomin indicated that in a final act of defiance, Erin had set the Great Hall on fire and ended her life in the process. One of the men of Dor Lomin explained that Turin had misjudged his kinswoman Erin's patience for weakness. Many a man of arms misreads patience and quiet. She did much good among us at much cost. Her heart was not faint, and patience will break at the last. When the snow melted, Turin, now at a crossroads and uncertain of what course to take, came upon the much-depleted men of Halith within the forest of Brethil. Following multiple encounters with the forces of Angband, they had been significantly reduced in number, and were now so few to now mainly reside within a bare wooden stockade named Ephil Brandir, under their liege lord Brandir, son of Handir. Devastated though they may have been, the men of Brethil were far from a broken people, and some of the woodsmen who lived within the Ephil Brandir continued to strike against Morgoth by hunting his orcish warbands. 
As Turin made his way through the forest, he heard a confrontation of man and orc, and quickened his pace to lend his aid. A small band of men had been trapped by a much larger orcish rabble, and would be slain to a man in their current predicament. Turin began to make a great noise, as if to indicate a large group of men were on their way to reinforce the weary defenders. Then he uttered a cry to initiate the charge. When Turin emerged from the tree line with Gerthang in hand, his appearance caused most of the orcs to take flight, with the remaining being chased off by the surviving men of Brethil. However, the victory was fleeting for Turin, as he inquired about Fenduilis, and their leader Dolas relayed the sad tale. Having followed the progress of the slow-moving orcish force which had come from Nagathrond, the men of Brethil conducted an ambush, and as the orcs were assaulted, they began to slaughter their captives. For Finduilis, a particularly brutal end was envisaged by her captors, as they fastened the daughter of Orodreth to a tree using a spear. Her final words were to tell Turin of her resting place. As a result, they buried her in a mound upon a hillock at the crossing of Tiglin, and when Dorlas and his company brought Turin to the mound, he broke down into such inconsolable grief that they believed him to be dead. At this point, the men of Brethil realized that the Black Sword himself had saved them, and they then brought him back to the Ephil Brandir. Their lead Lord Brandir, despite the reservations he maintained due to the curse which lay upon the shoulders of the man brought before him, still tended to Turin, and he woke once more in the spring. The courage of his forebears was awakened in Turin, and a new optimism for his future with it. All my deeds and past days were dark and full of evil, but a new day is come. Here I will stay at peace and renounce name and kin, so I will put my shadow behind me, or at least not lay it upon those I love." From that day, Turin decided he would now dwell within the Ethel Brandir and take a new name, Terambar, or Master of Doom. He set aside Gerthang and would instead fight with the spear or bow as he continued to hunt the orcs and defend the mound of his beloved Fenduilis, which came to bear the name Hulth Anelith. This mound of the elf maid came to be an area much feared by the warbands of Morgoth, who would only tread upon it in great numbers, and even then suffer dire casualties at Turin's hand. In Doriath, however, word had long since reached the kingdom of the fall of Nagathrond. Many within the girdle believed that Turin lay among the slain, but hesitated to investigate due to the presence of Glaurung within the halls of Feligund. This infuriated Morwen, who worried about her son's fate, whom she had entrusted to the elven king Thingol, who would not risk his people to uncover his current whereabouts. Despite the urging of Melian to not leave the girdle, Morwen would not be stopped. Leaving Nienor with Doriath, she set out to find her son, Thingol would not have her dragged back to the kingdom, as it was not his way, so instead, a company of battle-hardened watchwardens with Mablung at their head were sent out to follow and protect the wife of Hurin. Once she reached the Syrian, a wide and swift river, Mablung had to reveal himself and offer his aid, as Morwen did not know how to cross. As the company began to cross at the Twilit Meris, another rider was spotted. Nienor had also left Doriath, unwilling to have others risk their lives while she remained safe. Despite an argument between mother and daughter, Nienor would not be swayed, and so she joined the expedition, seeking out the truth of Turin's fate, and that of the kingdom of Nagathrond. When they finally reached the river Narok, Mablung led a company of a score of elves to ford the river. However, Glaurung was aware of their presence, and drove off all but Mablung as he emerged from Nagathrond. The latter evaded detection by hiding under a rock and waiting for the dragon to pass over the rocky outcrop before fording the river. Unfortunately, the remaining twenty elves tasked with protecting Morwen and Nienor looked upon the dragon's might and bade their wards to mount and flee. An ill wind blew the vapours of the dragon across the fog-strewn plain, which drove the horses to madness, separating the company as they lost control of their mounts. In the chaos of the retreat, Nienor's horse stumbled, throwing her to the ground, and she decided then to return to the hill upon which they had initially been camped, hoping Mablung would return. Having reached the summit where the fog was at its thinnest, Nienor was surprised by the appearance of Glaurung, who immediately caught her gaze, 
allowing him to use his powers to bend her will to him. The dragon then besmirched her brother's name, claiming he was little more than a coward who abandoned the womenfolk to the orcs, and Neonor reacted with an outburst which revealed her identity. This caused Glaurung to laugh, and with the utmost cruelty of purpose, he took from the daughter of Hurin her memory, as all grew dim to her, and she collapsed. Meanwhile, Mablung had explored the halls at length, and fearing the return of Glaurung, left the halls. During the crossing of Narog, he was spotted by the Great Drake. However, the power expended in breaking the will of a member of the House of Hador had left the dragon weary. Instead of killing Mablung outright, he bade him make his way to the hilltop to see what had become of his charge. Mablung made with all haste to the Ammonephia as Glaurung returned to his horde. When the elf arrived, he found Neonor near Comatos, but when he took her hand, she stirred and allowed him to lead her away from the hilltop. Left with little choice, Mablung brought Neonor eastwards, although she remained unresponsive and soon fell and lay still. Hope was returned to Mablung when three of the company came upon them and granted him aid. The journey was a slow one due to Neonor's condition. However, the farther they drew away from Nagathrond, the more strength returned to her. After many days of travel, they came to the western border of Doriath near Tyglin. Taking a rest before crossing into the girdle, they were set upon by a band of orcs and Neonor fled into the forest. Mablung was unable to find her despite his valiant efforts and returned to Doriath with grief in his heart. He was absolved of all blame for the matter, as Melian stated, you did all that you could and none other among the king's servants would have done so much. But by ill chance you were matched against a power too great for you, too great indeed for all that now dwell in Middle-earth. Despite this reassurance, the guilt of the loss of Morwen and Nienor remained a heavy burden and for three years, Mablung ranged from the Erit Wethrin to the mouths of Syrian fruitlessly in search of his charges. Mablung would never find Nienor despite his unceasing efforts. In fact, the curse of Morgoth was to reunite her with her brother Turin. A brutal and heart-rending end to our tale is on the way, and in the next video in this series, we'll cover the final chapter of the story of the children of Hurin and their great foe, the dragon Glaurung. We're planning to cover the battles of many other fantasy, sci-fi and space opera universes, so make sure you have subscribed and pressed the bell button. Please consider liking and sharing as it helps immensely, and don't forget to comment. We'll try to read and respond to every comment as we want to know what you think about this video and which videos you hope to see in the future. This is the Wizards and Warriors channel, and we'll catch you on the next one.